Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Adrian Bridge from uh, Taylor's Port once again, uh, having an opportunity to join you for uh, a short period of time to talk today about great vintage ports, uh, but also talk to a person, a very special guest, who has in fact uh, opened up um, the world of great uh, wine in a way that was probably never possible before. And I think that as many of us who are have been in lockdown, have been looking longingly at our cellars, wondering what we should drink and looking at those special bottles, which we thought we'd put away for a special occasion. And we're not quite sure whether getting this far down the Coravan crisis is, is the right moment. Greg Lambrecht, who invented the Coravan, has got the perfect solution. So Greg, you have transformed the world of fine wine. It is such a pleasure to uh, see you here on Instagram Live. Greg, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Adrian. Um, you are missed. It has been too long since I've been in your wonderful presence, either in London or in New York or in Boston or in Gaia or Porto. It's uh, great to see you. Yeah, well, I think the last time you were here, you came to celebrate your 50th birthday. I did indeed, and uh, it was a fantastic celebration. If anybody has not been to Porto that is on this uh Instagram Live, you have made a mistake with the early years of your life. It is time to get to Porto and it's a, and stay in one of Adrian's hotels because there, there are two. Uh, Infante Sagres is one of my favorites. And of course, your, your amazing yeah. hotel in Gaia is unbelievable. Well, and we're looking forward to opening this up um, at some stage in late June or, or early July as, uh, as things uh, change. We're certainly opening up a restaurant. Uh, here at Taylor's in the 18th of May. So things are beginning to come back. But I want to talk to you about your great invention. You're a man that has transformed more, um, more of the wine industry than anyone else. And you have certainly opened up great vistas to all of us who love fine wine. Not only do we have a chance now to taste and compare, uh, but, but we don't have to drink a bottle at a time to do it. So tell us, could you just briefly, how did you come up with the idea of Coravan? Well, uh, so, you know, Corbin's a way of pouring wine from a bottle without opening it. And, and I think the first time that I was aware of that being possible was my father, who was a type one diabetic. And so he was, uh, ever, ever since I was a child, he was drawing insulin out of a bottle and putting it back in the fridge and using it over the course of weeks, even months. And then um, I worked in medicine. I started working in medicine when I was 23. And my first job was at Pfizer. Uh, and I was developing a chemotherapy infusion system for uh, normally kids who had who had cancer, and we would implant a an implant underneath their skin and access it with a needle over and over again uh, throughout the course of their therapy. So I got I got really good at making needles that didn't do damage to things, and uh, and then um, I got married, and my wife and I didn't drink the same wines. I was traveling a lot. <laughs> we would argue, uh, and then she became pregnant and stopped drinking entirely. So I, I remember sitting in my kitchen and holding a bottle of wine and one of my needles going, "There has got to be a way <laughs> that I can get wine out of this with this." And uh, it only took me eleven years to uh, develop uh, at home with all sorts of different testing and making sure that it worked that I could drink a bottle five years later that I'd Coravand and uh, not be able to tell the difference between it and another bottle from the same case that I'd not yeah. touched. But one of the, the secrets, of course, is, is in this capsule, the, the heart of what's in a Coravan, because in this is the gas, exactly, is the gas that actually does it all, which is not only a gas that is um, environmentally friendly, uh, it's also, uh, well, I think it's, it's natural. You draw it out of the air and you put it specially yeah. in this. So argon, and uh, it's one of the noble gases. So if you remember your chemistry, it's all the way on the right-hand side of the periodic table. And it means it doesn't react with anything. And argon is the first noble gas that's heavier than air. And the way that they make it is, um, so we, we get ours from Austria. It's the, they're the cleanest producers of it. But uh, the way they make it is they freeze the air. Most of it's nitrogen and oxygen and carbon, carbon dioxide. And that all liquefies. Argon does not liquefy because it's a natural gas. And so it's actually 1% of the air that we are breathing is argon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, a, and you get a, it in the Austrian mountains, isn't it, where there is great purity? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, argon flows down. So I bet they get it from below sea level. They get it out. OK, so you don't have to climb a mountain to get great argon. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, now, I've, I've got a, a bottle of 94, which I'm going to 
Now, I suppose what I need to do is to try to demonstrate I know how to use this. And in front of you, Greg, this is going to be, um, I'm going to have the emails going to be going crazy. As no nerves. But we've got, to, we've got to purge it, haven't we? And then we've got to yeah. stick it nicely on the top here where it's a good solid. Exactly. Hold yep. the bottle because you don't want the bottle to fall over as you do this. Plunge it nicely in. Get a glass. Quite helpful That's at important. this point. I mean, otherwise yes. it's, uh, you know. <laughs> and then we tip it up and we put in some press bit of go. gas. And then we let beauty pour into our glass like yeah. this. I'm doing the there same. So are. I've got a 2017. So mine is quite a bit younger than yours, but I'm really looking forward to tasting it. I, I picked it up locally because I realized I drunk all of your wines. And so uh, this is a, and you're, you have to pronounce or correct my pronunciation. It's Vargas. Vargas, yeah, uh, Vargas. Vargas, yeah. 2017. Now lift the needle out. That's it. I've got it yep. with the right hand here. Take it off. And normally what this stage we do is we just, if I've got a, if I'm in my kitchen or that, I just give it a quick purge at that point, just in case there's any liquid in the needle, keep it clean because, um, you know, these needles, they're great, but they are liquid goes through them. There will be a tiny amount left inside that needle, and one wants to keep that nice and, and clean. For... That's it. You know, it's interesting. I've I've talked to a lot of restaurants during this whole COVID nineteen craziness, and um, one of the things that I've noticed is a trend. This smells freaking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to say that I am biased. I am. I not only like you a great deal and your wonderful company. Um, you are also our importers in, in uh, Portugal, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, we've, when we've shared many a meal, uh, well, we, not enough meals, we need more of them, but yeah. I'm also a part of the Confraria, uh, yeah, which I was, I felt totally un, unqualified for, but so happy that. Well, I think you could be part of the Confraria Vinda Porto simply because you choose a very, very healthy uh, wine glass to pour it in. I mean, that, that I look at me, I got a little one here. You got, you got a proper size glass there. I'm, I'm not screwing around. <laughs> this is my hey, first thing of the day. 17 Vargelas. So exactly. It, it's, it's a early day. So this is, I've got the 94, which, you know, I came to Portugal, um, in 1994, and this was also the year that our first child was born. So 94, is special for many reasons in our family. And of course now, um, 26 years on, um, the wine and is still amazing. I mean, the great color, this, great this thing flavor. Is this one's a child. Now, this is gonna last forever, um, this 2017. It is delicious now, but this thing is gonna last absolutely for. I remember we drank such special wines when, we, when you invited me over for lunch one day in your home. Uh, you had, so first of all, if anybody doesn't know, uh, Adrian is an unbelievable collector of ancient glassware, drinking vessels. Um, unbelievable collector. And uh, you get to see some of it in the hotel, but there's a ton of it in his house. And we were drinking wines together. You had one from your son that you made for his birthday, I recall. Mm -hmm. There was a special label yeah, uh, on that's the right. front. That was, that was delicious. And then you walked in and you said... Uh, Greg, I think this is from the end of your civil war. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. That was right. Yes, that was the Battle of Gettysburg. That was the 1868 that we had. That, well, that again, was it. Key to the Vargelas. So we're bracketing this quite well with with yeah. And that and the 1868. What's amazing uh, about that is it was how fresh it still was. How how rich. Fun enough, we weren't actually the owners of um, of the property in those days. If you remember that bottle has Ferreira, which was the company that, that uh, Don, yeah. Don or Antonio Ferreira was the owner at the time. But um, yeah, that was a memorable bottle. We didn't use Coravan, I remember. I think we, 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 did. Did, we drank <laughs> no, it. No, we did not. We <laughs> did. I think we, we drank quite a few bottles of port that day. Uh, I did find my way back to my hotel, I, <laughs> which is always a good sign. Yeah. Uh, since but but can we, well, yeah, we had another conversation about what you got up to in your university years but i'm not sure we can probably put that on on instagram live <laughs> so um i don't know uh, that it's legal uh, <laughs> they made a film about it <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed but we'll, we'll leave but it we move that. away we'll swiftly <laughs> um so let's go back to the wine so look i mean you're you're obviously uh getting uh using the caravan you developed this um not just to open great vintage port uh, but it opens a lot of other wines. And I mean, I know here in Portugal, we've got great support from a lot of the top restaurants and sommeliers who, who love this. Uh, but the reason they love it is because their customers are saying, 
We can go into a restaurant. We want to taste something fantastic. We don't need to buy the whole bottle. We can have it by the glass. So the whole buy the glass programs are now available to every single restaurant. It's a, it's a wonderful true? thing that we've seen. It is. I mean, we've, you, it's really taken off in the United States and in London, uh, in your area because of you. It's always the advocacy of the person who's, who's rep representing it that makes all the difference. Italy as well. Uh, Ceretto is our importer and I think we're in a few thousand restaurants across Italy. I mean, you walk into a small bistro or a, a small uh, cafe and they'll, they'll have uh, Corbin. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, France as well. Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing. So it's uh, a yeah. Sydney, Adelaide. Um, it's, it's a, uh, I have to say as an inventor, it's really gratifying to see how Corbin is being used. And when I invented it, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to walk into one of your restaurants. You guys have such an incredible list and be able to say, can I have a glass of this? Can I have a glass of that? Can I have a glass of this? I mean, it would be yeah, amazing yeah. to do a vertical of a uh, vintage port at the end of a meal. I, I do this at home. I, I'm, I'm, um, I used to never drink port when I was younger. And now I can have a glass of it at the end of a meal with some cheese and I'm in heaven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I think, and that's the beauty is that actually, this can bring open to, to everybody in their homes the ability to do food and wine pairings because you don't have to just open a bottle and stick with it for the whole meal. You can have a glass, have a glass, have a glass and just and just go through that whole process of, of being able to mix and match food um, and then do it again the next day, perhaps with a different food. Same wine, different food. See how that works. Yeah. So it just opened up this whole uh, vista of, of potential pairings. And your, your I, wife, as I recall, is a great cook. Um, I remember she... Uh, Put well, together an amazing lunch. I hope she. I hope she's watching. Yes, um, <laughs> you're absolutely right. She is an amazing cook, and I'm. I'm looking forward to supper tonight, darling. <laughs> um, but no, the. But I found you know the other interesting thing about this is I found that it's been hugely, hugely helpful for our sales force, because again, when we want to go around and sample our customers on say '94, and people say, "Well, how's the '94? How's it drinking?" You know, you've got a few more bottles to sell at the moment, or, or not, or whatever it is, another old wine, or whatever it happens to be. And you know, we can't open it the whole time, and you can't, you know, you don't. You want to make sure that they're tasting it in perfect conditions. So, by arming a salesman with a bottle and and a tool, um, you know, they can go and taste 20 customers over the course of a week or two, or whatever it it takes. Um, on the wine, knowing that they're delivering a perfect glass every time. And that to, 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 to my team has been a huge, huge business opportunity, which, which I don't know whether you thought about that when, when you started this. You, that's, that's a great um, point. You know, I had no idea. I, I thought that I had no idea how wine was sold. I, I, you know, I worked in medicine. I still do. I'm not a wine professional, as I always warn people. Somebody said, we need a Corbin emoji. I agree with you completely. We need a Corbin emoji. So, um, <laughs> This wine is so stunning, so I'm I'm going to pause for a second. But when when uh, I thought of this, I thought of it for use at home. So I wanted to be able to drink three, four different wines in an evening and pair. Um, I wanted to be able to go to a restaurant and order anything. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to get myself a little bit more of this while we're talking. And um, and so I also wanted to be able to go to a wine store and try wines before I bought them. Uh, yeah. That was that was sort of my dream. I did not know that there was this, how wine was sold uh, to restaurants and, and, uh, and to the trade. And then, you know, I started getting these thank you notes from uh, sales reps saying, hey, you've totally changed my life. And I was like, how? I don't even, <laughs> what, what did I do? And it's, um, we, we, there's one company, there was a distributor in Atlanta and they tracked one of their sales reps and they said their sample budget fell in half and his sales doubled. Fantastic. Because he was he was serving finer wines to more people he would never have thought would buy it. Yeah. And then when they tasted it, they bought it. Like he used to pick who he was going to serve it to. Yeah. But of course, they had the confidence because they'd tasted it. I mean, you know, all of us know that, you know, great wines and great companies have, have created reputations over centuries. But of course, it's all about that individual wine and giving the chance to taste it is is a huge opportunity. But, you know, we also use this uh, before we send bottles out to tastings because, you know, you, you ship whatever, you know, you imagine you do it. You know what this is like. You go off and do a tasting. You've got, I don't know, five different vintage ports. You've got an audience of however many people, 50 people. You need two bottles of each. And then you put in a backup in case one of them's corked. Yeah. So suddenly you're sending, you know, five extra bottles across the planet. 
to a tasting and somehow those never seem to come back. I don't know, I don't know how that works. Entirely. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but actually being able to, to taste it, you know, to have our winemakers be able to verify that it's in perfect condition before it actually leaves out for a tasting is a fantastic opportunity. And, and again, you were one, of the, you were one of the first to do that. Yeah, you were yeah, one of the yeah. first to do that. You and Chateau Margaux, um, Paul Pontellier, before he passed away, um, and his group used to do that at Chateau Margaux. And, and now we, I hear from Jean-Marc Rouleau in Burgundy, he does the same thing. And they, it's the, the desire to make sure that the wine that shows up at the event is, is in perfect shape, perfect. Um, which, you know, as, as, as a consumer who shows up at those events, uh, you want them to be great. You, you know, you're always so sad when somebody opens a bottle and it's, cor it's corked and, you know, they're, they're putting it away. It's, uh, yeah, it, you know, I've seen all these creative uses. Um, one of them that was interesting, I think it was also Chateau Margaux. They recork every 20 years or so. And they used to open up all the bottles and taste through all the bottles and find ones that were bad and find ones that were perfect and top up the other ones with the perfect one. Bottles would be open for half an hour. And so now what they do is they core them across all the bottles. Yeah. Find the best one. They open, fill, close. Open, fill, yeah. close. Bottles open for seconds. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, you know, one of the, our favorite places, 67 Pall Mall. Oh, yeah. Uh, in London. Yes. Really great place where we still need to hold a, a Taylor vertical or sticky vertical. Um, back when they're open, we are coming. Yeah, uh, no, I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, because they've, you know, Grant, who, who runs that as, as the wine list, has got um, an amazing, uh, collection of wines. And I think that, you know, that 67 Palmar was a great idea. Uh, there's so many wine lovers in London and that uh, the ability to taste just amazing things there is, is well, you know, you've been, I've been, uh, we just haven't been together and, and, and done, done the vertical yet, but, um, he did expand the club, didn't he? He went up, he went up another floor, I think in the building, there's so much yeah. popularity for it. And he opened one in uh, Singapore. I, I've seen that um, from the inside, and we were invited as members. I think one of the, the other things that was cool about it is during COVID-19, one of the things that he's doing is he's still holding online tastings, and he takes the bottles, and he breaks them up into these smaller bottles using Coravin. And he fills yeah. the smaller bottles all the way up and caps them. They're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and he sends them out to everybody who's interested. I, you know, it's one of the reasons why I'd love to have a flat in London is to be close to 67 Paul Mall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, go broke. <laughs> well, I, it's, but it's a great, great thing, isn't it? A great initiative there that the people are doing the online tastings at home, having this opportunity to share on on whatever social media platform that they're, that they're using and actually be feel they're part of it. Because when you're locked in and you're, you're just left with great wines. Uh, hopefully, you you got your your um, your Coravan. I guess this is all mail ordered as well, so you yep. can yeah we deliver everywhere. Run don't have to run out of gas, so you can keep going tasting all your great wines, and then um, but then maybe as you say, Coravan a small amount, send it across to your friends, and then you can have the the virtual the virtual tasting, and um, you know do the old chin chin with yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what well, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm gonna <laughs> <bing>. that's us. <laughs> so that, but um, you've come out. Tell me, I mean, last I last I saw, I mean, the, the latest models you've got are coming out with lots of colors. So you really created some. There we are. Oh yeah. So yeah. One, one of the differences. So you have a client. You've got you've got ye collector's oldie, items. Uh, exactly collector's <laughs> items. I love like the original. I love the original. Yeah. You know, we're we're a bit old fashioned over here. We love the original. No, it's a it's a tank, and I love it. <laughs> I mean, you can six feet on the concrete. You can throw it through a plate glass window. It's going to be fine. But uh, we made it a lot easier, and and this allows me to pour a little bit more wine. So uh, <laughs> the way that it, the way that it works is instead of having it to interact with a clamp, you simply take it, press it on top, push the needle yeah. straight through. It clamps itself. So yeah, it yeah, removes yeah. a lot of steps uh, from the whole process, makes it simpler and faster. Our dream was faster, easier, more yeah. fun than opening the bottle. And uh, I think we've gotten there. And, and, and we are almost done with sparkling. So uh, I am so I, excited. Yeah, well, I was, I was going to, to ask you about that because I've heard that – that because um, those corks, obviously, with, with the normal part of the cork, but also the, the – um, Mucillet. The mucillet. Yeah, the, exactly. The agglomerate cork or whatever bit, which is quite hard and, and has glue in it and holds it together. Getting a needle through that is, is certainly a, um, a big medical challenge because there's nothing in the medical industry that's hard as that, is there? No, I mean we we got to I, I I can't share too much because we're we're still going to be uh, testing everything with the with the producers first um, because we're using our product on theirs. So um, it's always my philosophy at the company that when we launch something new, we send it to the producers first so that uh, they can feel confident in it. And if they have feedback for us, it's negative or positive that we learn 
Um, so it's going to be staged. It's going to take us a while uh, to launch it because we're going to spend some time with the producers and spend some time with restaurants like 67 um, and get their, get their feedback. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we said when we founded the company, faster, easier, more fun than opening a bottle, independent of closure, still are sparkling. Yeah. And um, if we can do all of that, then uh, then we're happy. If we can enable somebody at home to be drinking a wine like this and recognize this is great, but it's way too young. I should be drinking the 94. <laughs> that's, well, uh, uh, that's my dream. I shall pour it through the telephone here. Now, well, I think <laughs> uh, actually I do. I do want to to make sure that all of our listeners understand one very key point, And that is, um, Greg, you came from a medical background and, you know, in medical terms, there is no room for any failure. And the approach you've taken to developing this product, to testing it, to putting it through all of its paces um, and not stopping till you personally were totally happy is, is an extraordinary thing. I mean, it's something I really, really, really respect because um, that I know it comes from your training. I know it comes from your philosophy and your, in, in, in how you approach business. But as a result, I think, you know, what the consumer gets is something that is, that is perfect. When you get later models, it's because it's been an improvement and it's been thoroughly tested. I love the original because for me, it still, it works fantastically, but there are new and modern ways to do it. And, and when are you going to come, when you come out with that, that sparkling product, I know that, um, you know, I'll be there with one of those straight away. Well, of course, we'll get one to you as quickly as we can. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it, it is part of my philosophy. I mean, every single core of it is serialized. Uh, so if something goes wrong, we know exactly what ha where it came from, what it's like. And uh, it's hard for me to give up on my medical training. I'm still doing, um, I work in spine surgery. I've um, mm -hmm. got a spinal surgery implant um, to, to, to treat people. It's super complicated nowadays because uh, elective surgeries are shut down due to COVID-19. They're beginning to open up in Europe again. Yeah. Um, but you can imagine all these people that are suffering that uh, are waiting as, as a result of their own, of the COVID-19, not they're, they're unwilling to go into a hospital and get surgery. But um, I, I, I love the I love the perf I'm a perfectionist. I'm an obsessive compulsive perfectionist. And I never want Corbin to be less than perfect. I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way about your wines, right? It, it, you never want to send a bad bottle to somebody, right? Absolutely not. No, I mean, perfection is what we, we aim to do every in every wine that we make. But but. The one thing that you've managed to do um, as we close this short session together, and 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 I look forward to our next talk, by the way. Um, but it it is that that you've managed to allow many many people to reach into their cellars and try their perfect bottles, whether they're perfect Bordeaux, perfect Burgundies, perfect um, wines from from the Napa or, or Northern Italy or wherever, and actually be able to taste it glass by glass, perfect every single time and so your uh focus on perfectionism has brought to us wine lovers of the world um a a great opportunity so i want to say publicly a very big thank you to you greg thank you for everything the coravan's done you know i love the product um i love the ability to taste lots of great ports and wines and others as a result and i really want to thank you also from a, as a businessman for the fact that your product is allowing the sales team to go out and just get more people enjoying great wine. I've got to tell you, um, Adrian, it's, uh, it warms my heart. I mean, this is what you hope for as an inventor. And I have to say that it's an enormous, wonderful team here at Corvin that makes it happen. I mean, our headquarters now, nobody's here because of COVID-19, but there's an incredible group of people here that make all of this happen. And their dedication to wine and to the winemakers and to the professionals and the consumer is, is intense. And, um, their passion is beautiful. And uh, I think it's because you work on such a beautiful product. Wine is such an emotional thing. It's the most social beverage. It brings us all together, even in yeah. crazy times like this. Um, I, can't, I, I really love this. And I can't wait until we're actually physically close to each other. Uh, you get a hug uh, when, when that happens. And, <laughs> and I look forward to uh, the wines that we'll be drinking together, the food we'll, that we will be eating. It'll be fantastic. Well, in the meantime, we'll just do a virtual toast. And say good luck stay safe um and thank you very much greg thank you adrian uh you're wonderful take care cheers, cheers. thanks for the amazing wine mm.